All right, it's up and running. And you have to log in here with the password that you had entered before. All right, so this is the new Ubuntu 10. I really like this version. I think it's sleek. Uh, well, at this point, it's up, but it's not very usable. What I mean is that you have this mouse issue. Uh, the screen is really small. There is no interaction between Windows and Ubuntu. What I mean, you can't really copy-paste. You can't resize the screen, see? So to solve these issues, VirtualBox offers virtual guest additions for different OSs. And so our next step is going to be installing these additions. After I first uh, installed Ubuntu, uh, the system is going to look for new updates that have to be installed before we can proceed further. And by the way, you can get to this update manager and uh, system administration update manager. So click on install updates. It's going to ask you for your password. Again, it's going to take a while. So updates are finished and now it's going to ask you to restart the machine. So let's restart now. To install guest editions, you go to Devices, Install Guest Editions. You know, on the previous versions of Ubuntu, there would be a desktop shortcut to Rebox editions. Uh, this time uh, you have to go to places and find it here. And you also might get a window prompt from VBox saying that it can't find a VBox editions and if you want to download it. So in this case just download it and proceed ahead. So open uh oh now it's here. Nice. Choose the appropriate file. Uh our system is Ubuntu X86. So you can um click it or you can go hardcore Linux and open up a terminal by pressing Control Alt T and just going to Okay, I hate all this typing. Once guest editions are installed, uh, you will have to restart Ubuntu as suggested here. But what we'll actually do is shut it down because we're going to be adding some shared folders in the settings. You can't modify settings when the machine is running. See, so it's grayed out. Let's shut it down then. Now go to settings, shared folders, and you can add a folder on your Windows system. I'll just add um, my whole, um, my documents folder and give it a name. Documents, fine, but Make sure, make sure you remember it because as I've said, you will not be able to access settings once the system is running. Well, and you can do some other modifications to settings if you want. So now let's start it again. Oh, and, um, remove, unmount the guest editions. As you can see, the guest editions are working. You can resize the screen. You can even do it full screen if you want. You don't need to press right control anymore. Can log in. Okay, I'll make it smaller for the recording. Uh, I really like this dynamic resizing. I think it's very nice. Uh, so now, uh, you need to mount this shared folder that you've created. Let's open a terminal and I suggest pinning this to the upper panel. Okay. 
Okay, that's better. I'm gonna create a directory that would be mount point for our share. Um, we can type a comment to mount it now. Documents uh, is the name of the folder, the way we entered it in uh, the settings. Now oh, it should be Vbox. So if you go now into Docs, yeah, your files are here. Pretty cool. The caveat though is that it's really one time deal. When you reboot it next time, uh, this f share will not be active. So in order to make it load automatically, uh, we'll need to add a line to the configuration file, which is RC local. Let's So basically it's the same command, but the path has to be changed to full. So obviously substitute uh, your own username here and then save it and it should work. One last thing I want to do is install Russian as I use it on some of my sites. Let's go system um, administration language support. Okay, install remote languages. Now I will need to Add the keyboard layout. Okay. I think I need this one. So this is done and we have installed our Ubuntu and on VirtualBox and added guest editions. So I think it's in a very good shape now and our next step is installing um, Apache, PHP, MySQL, integrated development environment and other necessary tools that can be used to uh, work on Drupal development.